All right. So I'll just continue here. So the topic is challenges and morality in ethics and business. So it's very difficult. Can somebody actually say something to me? <laughs> Camila? Yes, uh, we can hear you. Um, can you nice. please continue? It's like 1 a.m. here and I'm just passing out. So I'm sorry about that. Okay. No, well, no. The... Sorry as well. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it's you. okay. So the topic is challenges and morality. We are uh, AI company, startup AI company. And when we build an AI model that can predict the human personality, and it's currently doing it at 60 to 70 percent. What we thought of it is that it can be used in so many ways. And the only way that we, uh, I mean, we, the, in order to use it in the right way, we need to have a good idea of what morality, ethics, and all these things are. Most of these ideas that are shared today has been verified by our AI models to be. Uh, shown in human behavior and everything. So that we start sharing. First, uh, when we talk about human beings, what we believe is that the nature of human being is neither good or bad, but it's programmable. We, we program ourselves, we, uh, we let others program, uh, we let the environment program us, and we are programmable actually in, in a way. And how we do is, is by words. And these words, they carry meanings. The concepts of a word is what actually helps us to grow, help us to learn. And it is the, it's the way that we have been programmed. And the way the brain works is actually, it's a pattern generator. So for each and every word, let's say when you say mom, it's the same kind of a pattern is there in everyone, in each and every one. And these things are triggered, uh, and it can be monitored even. And the way that uh, when you, when there's a new pattern introduced to someone, and usually the brain prefer not to make new patterns because it's a taxing process. So in there we say open, keep an open mind. So we would like to know some of these concepts might be not so, uh, not so new, but some maybe you also keep an open mind. Neither take it as wrong or right, just have an open mind. And why we are doing this that is because today the world is moving really fast. And in order to make a decision, we need to know whether we are doing the right decision or not. Because we don't get, get much time to evaluate. We don't even get time to even ask someone whether this is right or wrong, get feedback and everything. No, we need to know. And this is based on our truth. What is truth? The truth is that if you want to define it, it can be said that my truth is mine and your truth is yours. And that's, that's to the extent uh, we can go when we talk about truth. Uh, and this depends on our perspectives, or what we see about it. And when the truth collides, when, when I say that thing is mine and when somebody else says the thing is his, then the truth collides and the only way in order to uh, solve it is non process through justice or mercy. And justice, I think uh, that we outsource it, we give somebody else or the majority or somebody decides for us when we can't come up with a, a negotiation and everything. Mercy is, is the act of, you can say, if you want to put it down in words or in, in a way to identify it, we can say what we have said is what is mine is yours, what's yours is also yours. In, in, in another way, we don't want anything, everything is yours. In a conflict, when someone decided like that, that, is, that can be classified as exercising mercy. So in order to move fast in a business, in order to have a peace of mind, what we all need is to do the right thing. So what is the right thing? 
of this comes with understanding, knowledge. I always came through some of these things. And application of knowledge is actually wisdom. And this right, wrong, correct, incorrect, truth, not truth, moral, immoral. If you want to define all of these into one, say it's what is right is actually action based in it that do not harm others. That's a right. Anything that doesn't harm anyone's or it gets onto somebody's right, it's a right. And if it harms someone or property, it's a wrong. So in this sense, uh, we have identified in some ways how these things are manifested or played around in the right actually it encompasses of love that's the what generates the right in this world and what generates fear is what generates the uh, the opposite extent or the wrong in, in a way and what the when you love something what actually happens is that you start learning about it. You start accumulating knowledge about it. And when you fear something, you ignore it. And here ignorance, you have to know that ignore means the knowledge is accessible, but you choose not to have it, not you just ignore it. You, you maybe because it's difficult for you to uh, stomach it or anything, but when you ignore the knowledge, then it, it comes down to confusion. On the other side, you get sovereignty and freedom. And this comes down to order. But when you know, you get confused, you really want to be controlled, a control freak in a way. And that creates chaos. So these are the two ways you can go about in the right and wrong. And for that, we have a law that defines that uh, a living being or their property must have been harmed in order for violation of nature or wrongdoing to have taken place. Uh, this is the same thing as we said before. And in the on only thing here we need to know is that if something is wrong for me to do, I can't delegate it to someone else. In a business, if we know that it's something wrong, we can't outsource it to someone else and make it a right. We can license someone to do something. A wrong will remain a wrong. And this is uh, being manipulated in many ways in businesses. So with all these things, how are we gonna get uh, in our businesses keep on running? Actually, we need to apply force. Force is a good thing, you know, as long as it doesn't go into violence. Violence, a force become violence when there's a harm. But as long as there's no harm, then it's a force. So we need to apply force in order to move forward in, in business or in, in, in any way. But if it comes down to violence, then it, it won't work. And he, I'll skim down. This is really uh, very impo important thing that we have found out is that in order for something to be as mine, let's say this laptop that I'm using and laptop or phone that you're using, the, the, all these things are made up of atoms, it's the same thing. How can I say this bunch of atom is mine, that bunch of atom is yours, and how, how do we classify it? It's actually human made. The ownership, the concept is human made. And it, it's derived from properties a thing should possess. For example, for anything to be claimed as mine or yours, anything to have an ownership, it has to have three properties in it. Or else it, it, it's, it has to be, it will be conflicting, it will be confusing, or it will be corrupting. So rightful possession, you shouldn't harm anyone while you are getting it. Let's say you stole something and bought a phone. Would that phone be yours? No, that's not yours. 
is someone else actually. So in the same sense, you have to have control of the use or you have to make use of it. If you have thrown it away, if you can't control it, it's not yours. And you have to take responsibility. Of it. If there are these three properties, then it's yours. So we can say the, all the crimes and all the bad things that's happening in this world is individual or group can be summed to as one, one crime, that is stealing. When we do harm or when we get into other people's right, actually it's stealing. It's, it's come down to stealing. So don't steal in businesses, just don't. It's not worth it actually. And the other way you can measure in a company or individually how moral it is, is through freedom, because freedom and morality, they are directly proportional. Uh, as morality increase, freedom increases. Uh, as morality decline, freedom declines. And oh, the reason why we do it, as I said before, ignorance is one factor, willful ignorance. The other is refusal of owning personal responsibility. It's self-floating. And what actually happens when anybody has these, or these uh, they become indifferent to others. And when you become indifferent, uh, you don't feel mercy. You don't feel love. You, you are someone who has learned to be indifferent towards one person in your life, won't be able to fall in love. You so find very hard to. So th these things can be handled if you are not ignorant in saying, when you can find knowledge, go and seek it. Nobody is stopping you. Nobody can stop you. Actually. And refusal to and not taking responsibility of your actions. And self love and, and abandonment issues is a big one that's partitioning and everything comes down there. And the challenges here uh, is fear, uncertainty. I'll, I'll skip through it. It's a pretty, I think the time is running out. Uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt. These are the things. Uh, consciousness, okay. Spiritual currency. Uh, I, I think, I think, I think you're fine in time. You, you can slow down if you want. All right. Yeah. Well, all the suffering in the world when you came back to that, and it's actually of two things. You, uh, you either accept the false or you are rejecting the truth. So, and I just lost the flow. Actually. <laughs> these are the concepts that we have been using in our AI model. So that's what we, and these are trialed and tested things. Maybe the way, and this in the in the sense of spirituality, the money is the resistance in the system for change. So money, the, the use of money is for is seen as a resistance of change, and the actual value is in time and attention. You can spend time, you can pay in attention. You can pay attention, you can spend time. These are the actual currency that is really in, in the spiritual sense, in order to enlighten, in order to gain something. These are the only things you need, not physical money or anything. And uh, in the hierarchy of need, what we have realized is that people say that uh, there is basically, there is, this, these are models or ways of perspectives from which we can look or measure the world. This is not the only way, there are multiple ways we can look into, just like when we say earth to some people, it's a plot of earth. In other way, a concept like hierarchy of needs also has different kind of models, but we, we can, we, in order to communicate, we have to stick to one model. So when we look at hierarchy of needs, when we say the first thing is basic need, it's survival. Uh, somebody who don't have 
food it's in the, in the survival mode and once you get that food what you think about is stability uh, tomorrow also you want to get food. You, you want to be the, the security part you get it down on your fridge and stock it up and that's security and only after that once you have passed through that you become socializing you, you create a family or uh, you even have time to spend with family after that and then you become a guru or expert or uh, you want fam you want to be someone who matters and then it becomes self-actualization in a, in a shorter way we can say self-actualization is thinking about others more than what we have learned is actually you can go from top to bottom uh, this is uh, right. when you start talking about thinking yourself about others everybody listens to you when you have ideas that matters to everyone that is good for others you become actually an expert and when you become an expert you have social groups a lot of them and then we have found out that you get the security stability and social so you can start here even you don't need to start here so what is required uh, what is required in order to move forward is that the majority people are not aware of what is happening in the, of the truth so you become a service of the truth you speak the truth and you become a service of the truth and this requires courage and persistence and real practical world extra actions so let's say uh, time when we think about time we need to live right now and the way that we can say it is that uh, can we die yesterday no can we die tomorrow no when death comes to each and everyone it will be right now death is the only thing that hits us right now and that brings us into a right now moment so you can't die tomorrow you can't die yesterday you can only die right now so that is being in now and if you're not happy right now you can't be happy yesterday it is useless actually it's a memory you can't be happy tomorrow you just need to be happy but when you aim for happiness what happens is you can't be happy without being sad because in order to be happy the thing that you want you have to realize first that you don't have it that is a sad face and then you become happy the only thing that doesn't have a duality as such a state that we can achieve is peace and joy and the difference between peace and joy is that peace is individual joy is collective thank you for listening and just any questions <laughs> Uh, no questions, but uh, good information. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome.